Hey, welcome back. This is an introduction to a new unit we're doing in physics, and that is of momentum and conservation momentum. And so today we're going to talk briefly about our introduction to what momentum is. So let's talk about that. What do you think of when you hear the word momentum? And do you think this rugby player has momentum? I would argue that momentum is actually hard to define for most people if they're not using a physics definition, but the concept that most people have of momentum is actually pretty close to the physics definition of the word momentum. We talk about athletes who gain momentum or lose momentum as they do various things, and that is correct. People do gain and lose momentum based on forces and interactions with other objects. All right, but let's go back to our basic definition in terms of physics. We're going to say momentum is the vector quantity, that means direction matters, that is the product of the object's mass and velocity. Or, in a simpler way, you could say momentum is like mass in motion. I've heard that before as well, and I think that helps. Mass in motion. And there is an equation we can use for it, and that's going to be this most commonly, although technically this is a little more correct. These arrows up above the letters signify these are vectors. So sometimes authors or teachers will put arrows up above to help you to recognize that this is a vector, this is a vector. So this is more technically correct, but in practice a lot of people just write this because they don't want to have to write an arrow above every single vector that they deal with. And so I will say that momentum is that p-value, m is mass, and v is velocity. It is not speed here, so we're using velocity as the vector version of motion. Oh, and I do want to stress that momentum is not the same thing as kinetic energy. We're going to get into the similarities and differences later, but at the outset they are not the same thing. All right, so let's do a simple introductory problem with this. We've got a surfer here. He's got a forward direction we're going to define in the direction of this arrow over here. So we'll say this is positive. And he's going to be moving in that direction at 1.23 meters a second. He's got 77.1 kilograms of mass. What is his momentum? So it really is going to be just this easy as plugging these values in. I will say a couple things about this. Notice we are using a lowercase p for our momentum variable, so don't get that confused with an uppercase p, which represents power. The other thing I want to point out is, notice there is no summative unit at the end of this. Like, the summative unit of force, it's in newtons. So like kilograms times meters per second squared, that is set at being equal to a newton, or a watt is a joule per second. All of that to say we do not have such a unit for momentum. And for physics courses, usually we're using kilograms times meters per second for our units. But you can have other things too. You can have grams, you can have centimeters here. There's enough variation so that we don't have a summative unit. All right, next up what I want to do is talk about... Now he's going back out. So I don't have a picture of him going back out, but surfers actually have to do this quickly. As the waves are coming in, they need to race out. Otherwise, they get caught in these waves and get buffeted by the waves. So he can, like, duck dive under the wave. Let's say he's going to travel at exactly the same speed, but in the opposite direction. And the question is, what is his momentum? Remember, we said the forward direction for the last problem, that was our positive value. So the backwards direction over here must be the negative value in terms of direction. And remember that momentum is a vector quantity. So if we look at this, this is a vector. This is not speed over here. This is velocity. So we're going to say, well, we know what the magnitude is. It's 1.23 meters a second, but it's in the negative direction. So what do I write for my V value? Well, I'm going to write a negative 1.23 meters per second. So the math works out to be exactly the same, but the direction is going to be in the opposite direction. And so we signify that with a negative sign. So you can have a negative momentum. That just means it's momentum in the opposite direction of positive. That's all that it means. All right, and so lastly, what I would like to do is talk about some similarities and differences between momentum and kinetic energy. So here's our equation for momentum. Here's our equation for kinetic energy. Can you think of one way they are similar? Well, they both deal with moving objects or deal with motion, right? That's how they're similar, and so that's how people can get them confused sometimes when they're thinking about them. I'm arguing that they are mostly different though. So can you think of a difference between momentum and kinetic energy? All right, well, I would say the biggest difference and the most crucial one is that momentum is a vector quantity and kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. So this has to have a direction associated with this. And this inherently has no direction associated with it. 
All right, well, can you look at the equations and do you notice any other differences between the two? One important difference is that kinetic energy is a squared value. Changes in the V value, the speed over here, are more significant in kinetic energy. So the faster something is going, the greater the difference in kinetic energy. So if I can give you a quick example, I used to like to watch UFC fights. If a UFC fighter is in the octagon and he's going to strike his opponent, he's going to hit him. At the beginning of the match, let's say he's not tired and his punches are three times faster than his punches are at the end of the fight. Well, if his punches are three times faster, that means the amount of momentum he has in his punches are three times greater. But the kinetic energy of his punches, the ability to do work or to cause change on the other guy's body, is going to be nine times greater if his punches are three times faster. So I would say that squared value is important, and we need to consider that as a significant difference. All right, lastly, kinetic energy does have a summative unit. So a kilogram times meters squared per second squared, that all gets combined into a joule whereas this has no summative unit over here. And that's our intro to momentum. So I'm going to talk through a bunch of ideas in momentum. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments, let me know down below, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.